One thing about this painting is there's not actually a lot of things in the picture plane. There's the dog, there's a, a bit of the road, a plant and some grass, and of course the sidewalk, which is mainly yellow and gray. But that doesn't mean not to pay attention to the negative space. And one of the reasons I selected the photo is I did like the negative space and all the texture that I'm trying to replicate, which is going to be lots of layering of details. Yes, it's very tedious, but I chose to do this. Some of the little details I'm trying to capture are little rocks, the little paint drops, and I'm paying also attention to the temperature of the shade. As you see under the paw, it's more on the warmer side. So I added some orange underneath its paw so it could lift the paw off the sidewalk. Also, I kind of like failed early on getting the shadow that the dog's casting, but later I will make it a little darker. But early on, as you can see from what I'm working on, it's not that dark. And this is an issue I had early on that I correct later in the painting where the light is not light enough and the dark is not dark enough. Both the dog and the background. One thing I really liked about the sidewalk in the photo were the cracks, and that's something I emphasized. There's lots of colors in the yellow that I tried to capture. Obviously the side that the sunlight is hitting directly is going to be very bright, but there's some casted shadows from the imperfections I tried to capture. Also there's reflecting light in the cracks that are really deep, and I tried to capture those as well. And then there's the bricks or tiles that are in the sidewalk, they're not even. And I tried to emphasize that in the painting. As I was painting the tiles, I was paying attention to the crevices. In order to create the illusion that they're popping out, you have to darken the inside where the sun is not hitting them and add some highlights where the dark and light meet. That way you could get the illusion that they are 3D and not perfectly flat. I guess those who laid those tiles didn't exactly lay them perfectly. Besides those cracks on the sidewalk, there's a huge chunk that's missing in the corner of this sidewalk. It's like a car like rammed it or something. And it appears it has layers of paint from years of painting. And because of that, there's lots of bumps and imperfections. It's definitely not a smooth surface. And I think it adds to the realism the more I capture of it. When painting the missing chunk, I paid attention to the changes of light and dark. That way I could form that gap missing the sidewalk. Because of that big crack, it's a very important part in the painting. It draws a lot of attention because of the contrast. And it's also very close to the dog. In some ways that crack and other lines help lead the viewer towards the dog. And underneath the dog, there's more imperfections. If I didn't do all these imperfections, the painting would probably have been very boring. And it's one of the reasons why I chose the photo because the negative space had a lot of detail, including the exposed areas where the yellow got chipped away from the sidewalk. Again, there's a lot of little details on the sidewalk that I was trying to capture, and it's not a completely smooth surface, so the bumps will cast shadow. In order to accomplish the illusion of those bumps and crevices, I implemented a lot of dry brushing. I would lay out the brights and the darks and I would go back with a dry brush to smooth them out. And then I also paid attention to certain details that stood out over the others. Tedious, yes, but I was trying to capture as much as possible to make it more believable and fill the negative space. In some ways the negative space in this painting is becoming an actual character, but again the dog is the star. In case you're wondering, the colors I use primarily for the yellow are cadmium yellow and also cadmium yellow light. But I also added cadmium orange to the mix and even viridian in certain areas. I also use a mixture of alizarin and crimson and viridian to get it dark in certain areas. And for the highlights I use titanium white with a tad bit of orange. When I laid out the colors I would do some dry brushing to smooth out the imperfections because for the most part they all have different levels of sharpness. Sorry if I'm boring you for all the detail that I'm trying to establish here, but it's necessary in my opinion to get the message across of the realism of the issue. Because the imperfections in my personal opinion are going to add to the suffering of the dog. Just like the dog itself, this sidewalk has seen better days. And the years of abuse from cars and people are starting to take its toll with paint chips, cracks, and missing chunks. 
Also note how I'm using multiple brushes in some scenarios. It allows you to use two different colors, and in my case, light and dark tones. That helps speed up the process of getting the imperfections and how they react with light. I apologize for the angle of this. I did not know I was gonna be in the painting this much, but here I'm trying to do the bricks that are in the back. And one thing I'm striving to do is actually less detail there. Why? Well, because of this, more detail in the front. It makes sense. If you go to a beach, pay attention to the sand in the distance. Can you see each grain of sand? No. But when you look down at your feet, you can see seashells and other things. But the point is, you can see more detail of the sand underneath your feet than you can in the distance. And you kind of want to portray that sense of declining detail as you go further into the distance to get that illusion of death. These tiles here are a lot closer, so obviously I'm going to spend more time detailing them. This area of the painting I actually had to go back and darken because it was not dark enough where the paw and the dog cast a shadow. Anyhow, some of the details I'm trying to capture in the tile are little pebbles I saw and the rough texture that is grainy on the tiles themselves. And I paid attention also to the crevices, the light and the dark, and I added highlights where the edges of the tiles are in order to give them more of an illusion that they are popping out. One technique I used is, after laying out a lot of detail, I would actually dry brush and smooth out some of it. Then I'll go back and detail more. Why would I do this? Well, sometimes I'm not satisfied how it looks, but it somehow adds in the end to the overall appearance of texture. In some ways, in order to get the texture of those tiles, I actually went with a little brush and added little dots. Because if you look very carefully, those tiles are actually made of concrete and there's little pits everywhere and many of them. So if you rub your hand onto the tile, it's not smooth. It's rough. And in order to get the illusion of those little pits, it's a lot of little dots of black and white. Well, not exactly black and white, but light and dark. I did use a lot of dry brushing also to dull some of the detail, but the closer to the viewing plane, the more I try to show. And also the contrast. Less contrast towards the back and more towards the front. That helps establish distance, even in a painting that only has about 10 feet of depth. Remember, you're trying to create the illusion that it's 3D on a 2D surface. This chunk again was one of the more challenging areas to paint and I'm still kind of struggling to finish it. It's a lot of little changes of color, light and dark that form it. In the end, I want it to be believable that there is a big piece missing from the sidewalk. I didn't build these sidewalks, but one thing I did notice is there are two types of bricks used to construct them. One that's flat and one that's bigger on the bottom throughout the whole length of the sidewalk. So there's actually a little division between them. Because of that, I paid very close attention to try to capture those bricks. The layers of paint kind of like hide them, but they're there. If anything, I painted the entire sidewalk with that in mind. I pretty much sculpted it with light and dark, all the little crevices and bumps. I looked very carefully at the photo as I did it, but having an understanding how the light reacts, even in the shade, to those imperfections, it helps in the end. Even though I'm a painter, I still feel like a sculptor sometimes, the way I carve features in a painting. And here I'm painting the paw of the dog. This is one of the few parts of the painting that I have yet to go back into, and I might not. As of right now, I kind of like how there's minimum detail and it's receding. Here I began laying out the nails of the dog as well as the fur. Like the rest of the body of the dog, I laid out each individual hairs and then I would go back and dry brush and then add darks and lights and highlights. But since it's more in the shade, it's not going to have a lot of contrast and it's going to be a lot more cooler than the paw that's sticking out in the sun. And here I'm beginning the ear. Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but once I established the form of the ear, I had to pay attention to the hair and how light and dark tones weaved. It might not seem like it has a lot of detail, 
but as I painted it, I paid attention to how it folded and little hints of red and orange. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I probably have two more videos to go. I said in the previous one that it was going to be a total of three possibly, but I have a lot of footage, which will include more fur texture on the dog and the final touches, of course. Anyway, thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Char Arlimbos. I go by Bob. I am not your typical painter. Also, check out my Instagram, not your typical painter, of course, for more of my work. Anyway, stay tuned for more. Thank you and bye.